got cut off. Anyways, you can vent out of those either in the ambient air or uh, if you get fancy with some duct work, I believe that is just as acceptable. <clears throat> this is the to and from. And the check valve below is to keep water or glycol from running out of your tanks if you for some reason you need to shut off the unit to service it. Uh, the solenoid valve is a secondary acting on, on that. So these two valves operate with each other in, in order to uh, make sure you don't get backflow. So the burner exhaust, burner exhaust, burner box. This is just the box that covers the burner, not the burner box itself. That is an 8 inch ID. You're going to want to use a uh, double walled if possible. It doesn't have to be, but a double walled furnace vent um, to pipe out of the building with that. That's kind of up to you guys. Whatever cut requirement you have locally is what you're going to want to go by. Um, <clears throat> The burner cover over here has a spot in here where you'll be plumbing in the gas. And this hole back here is actually, if you look in when the uh, burner is lit, there's going to be two little lights in there. And they show if the burner has actually been ignited. That way, you know, you're not sitting there wondering why your stuff isn't heating up. <clears throat> So from the control panel, you got a bunch of wires coming off. Now you'll notice one of them comes over here, wraps around the tank a little bit, and is held up by these brackets. And that's the main power to the burner. So you're gonna hook that straight to the burner. The other one goes to the temp probe right here. And we try to label everything, so it should be clear. If it's not, give me a call. Try to keep the cord away from the kettle. Uh, it should not be hot, but in the case of an accident or something, it's not good to have cords leaning against your stuff. The other ones off of there run along this upper part. And over here, I want you to put them on the brackets. And then they come down as a group and they split off right here. Now, some of them, this is the temp probe for the ton. As you can see, it goes up there to the ton and it's labeled. The other one is going down to the pump and you're gonna need to wire that in. The other group of wires goes through this tube right here along the back of the ton and then comes out the other side and this needs to be wired to your boiler um, the there's two power wires one is labeled and goes to the control box for it that's where the gas hooks up right there the other wire is to the hot liquor pump, and that's the recirculation pump. So it's wired in specifically for that, so don't swap the wires around. Um, the other part is the temperature probe. There you go. Goes in the back. As far as the piping on this, this is how it should be piped. If you decide to move the boiler to a different location for whatever reason, Make sure that it is hooked up the same way. Supply and return, upper, lower. Also, there's a PRV here. This PRV will never, ever, ever open. And the fact is, is that this is an ambient system. It is ventilated. There will be no pressure. But it is required to be there. And so you need to have a pipe coming off of that threaded bit down to the floor, roughly a few inches off the floor. You'll need to vent it, obviously. It's a gas-fired boiler. As far as your piping goes on other stuff, we have <clears throat> hot liquor recovery. That is the 
pipe that goes out of your heat exchanger, so your media out, and it goes back into the hot liquor tank so you can recover your water that you're cooling your wort with and it's not wasted. If for some reason you don't want to use it, can't imagine why, but if you don't, you can obviously open up that one right there and just drain it straight out. That's the beer wort media in, or not media, excuse me, beer wort in. So from the manifold, your wort will go into the heat exchanger there. As you can see, there's a multi-point draw on your ladder ton. <clears throat> Good efficiency. You don't want just a center pull. That's not enough. Pump in and pump out. Back to the Vorloff line. As I said, it's going right here to the manifold and a lot of this will already be on your ton so you don't need to worry about it but you will have to worry about a couple of them and that is this one right here the whirlpool you're gonna have to hook up that line to the manifold and the other one is this one right here which is the kettle drain that goes across gets bracketed on here and then goes over to the big T on the front. This little hatch here is the access hatch for the burner box. Now, when you take that panel off, there's gonna be a door inside and you don't pull the door out, you push it in. So give it a little jiggle, don't force anything, just jiggle it in until it drops in and then put it face down. You're going to see a whole lot of ceramic insulation. It'll be bright white. And basically, after shipping, you need to check this before you fire up the kettle to make sure that during shipping, nothing came loose. And basically, you should not see any flaps hanging around. You're going to see a little mushrooming here and there up towards the kettle bottom, and that's normal. But uh, there should not be anything hanging. If there is, it needs to be fixed before you fire up the kettle. <clears throat> this is the water mixing assembly from the bottom. Oh, one thing I didn't mention. The hose barb that is up there above the thermometer. Now that is a runoff. So if you're trying to dial in temperatures or you just want to flush something, you're going to run off through there. Uh, which means you'll have to either put a hose on it so that it goes down to the floor or something. It's just basically an exit. And that should be wide open anytime you see IP. So you should have that open with another valve on the mash hydrator open to an order, you know, make sure that you don't put a vacuum on the tank or pressurize the tank and that goes for any tank so you have to have an exit anytime you see IP. Your kettle has a big old vent so you're pretty taken care of there. Your hot liquor has a two inch vent on the bottom that actually goes up through the tank to the top so you don't need to worry about that but the ton is going to be the one you want to watch out for. So we've covered all that. That's kind of the gist of it. So if you have any questions, which I'm sure you will, give me a call. But here's your brew house in a nutshell. Cheers.